Let me first uh, talk a little bit about who I am. After 22 years of, uh, see, of different kind of management role in different kind of company, some are German company, some are Japanese company, some are American company. Three years ago, I started up a new um, consulting firm together with my partner. And this consulting firm is currently expanding its footprint in Shinshu by spinning off um, another new startup in the Innovative um, Incubator Center of uh, National Tsinghua University, which is also my um, alma mater. And I graduated there uh, with a chemical engineering degree a long time ago. Yeah. Today, the main thing of my uh, talk will be to uh, share with you my Shinshu story. Okay. I will talk about what I learned in Shinshu and how I got involved in the uh, semiconductor high-tech industry and how I contributed my knowledge and skills to the growth of the high-tech industry in Taiwan as well as the other region in the world. Thank you, um, you know, for inviting me here. Then, after my speech, you probably will know why I come back to Xinxi to start a new company. Because I truly appreciate um, this place very much. Um, I kind of uh, became aware that you know how much I miss this place. Um, probably in my uh, late twenties. Yeah, the people, the environment, and even the food. Yeah. Okay, so I, I will, you know, uh, talk about my, my story and basically uh, there will be uh, five elements in my uh, Shinshu story today. I will go through them one by one. First, I will talk about how I made the first uh, connection with Shinshu. It all started uh, when I entered National Tsinghua University, which is a uh, neighbor over here, back in uh, 1985. Before the age of 18, I've never been to Xinchu. Okay, uh, I never thought of that uh, Xinchu uh, can become a big part of my life. Basically, my uh, academic and professional experience all have something to do with Xinchu since my university days. In addition, most importantly, I met my wife in Xinchu. Okay, when both of us uh, enter and the university, and also we join the same. Uh, uh, campus newsletter uh, club. So it, it does have uh, a lot of things, um, you know, good memory uh, to me in Shinshu. Yeah. So let me talk a little bit about uh, the position of Shinshu in uh, the global supply chain of the high tech industry. Taiwan is being called as the uh, uh, Silicon Alley. It's primarily because Xinchu played a very critical and very successful role of the high-tech center in this island. And particularly this place, the Xinchu Science Park, is basically uh, the center of Taiwan high-tech industry, surrounded by uh, many uh, academics like uh, Tsinghua University, Zhao Tong University, and also E3 and six other national labs. So, Xinchu Science Park really become the uh, Silicon Valley of Asia, not just in Taiwan. And also, it is the home base for many leading high-tech companies. For example, like uh, TSMC. So, let's talk a little bit about TSMC. For those who don't know TSMC, TSMC is a Xinchu Science Park headquarter company. And TSMC is also the global number one semiconductor contract manufacturing company. It is also the most profitable company in Taiwan. I will explain a little bit more detail later. Here are a few pictures of TSMC. Okay? Uh, no matter you look inside the factory or look you know, from outside, everything looks great, right? Clean, very advanced, very stylish. So basically, um, the modern development of Xinchu City is actually supported by a world-class academic and research institute as well as um, the growth of the high-tech industry. 
the contribution coming from company like TSMC. So let me summarize some interesting facts and achievement about Xinchu for you. So let's look at it. First one. Xinchu is the second highest average household income city in Taiwan, just next to Taipei. Xinchu also has the highest birth rate, so make it the youngest population age city in Taiwan. So that's a pretty amazing thing, right? I think the mayor of Xinchu city is probably also the youngest mayor in Taiwan. Okay, I could be wrong. And Xinchu headquarter company, TSMC, as I say, has become the highest market value company in Taiwan, not only making most of the profit, but the market cap of TSMC, roughly accounting for 17% of total Taiwan stock market value in this month. Okay? And Xinchu is listed as the world's number 75 best university student city by QS Institute, which is a UK institute. So it's actually pretty good ranking. If you compare to uh, other cities, for example, Taipei, uh, it's ranked as 21. Uh, Hong Kong is 11. Singapore, number 14. And Beijing, 30. Shanghai, 25. And Xinchu is actually better than other cities, for example, like Nanjing in uh, China and Wuhan in China. So this is amazing, you know, I think this is a great achievement because of many things, because of uh, so strong infrastructure and the growth of the uh, high-tech industry in Xinchu. So next I want to share several um, stories about how my semiconductor career journey started from Xinchu. So first one, I will talk about my first academic course. I took this course when I was uh, junior in um, uh, Tsinghua University. It is called uh, Overview of Semiconductor Material Science. Yeah. Uh, because my undergraduate is chemical engineering. I'm familiar with uh, the general industrial chemicals and uh, the manufacturing process uh, for general chemical industry or other kind of uh, consumer product. But really this course kind of opened the door and helping me uh, guide me through uh, the process to learn some basic um, knowledge about how to make the high-tech product like semiconductor chips. Yeah. So the second story I want to share with you is um, how I got my first job from my first course. Well, after discharging from two-year military service, uh, at that time I applied several jobs. One of the jobs is a semiconductor material sales position in a global um, material company. So at that time, um, I prepared a lot for um, the interview. So during the interview, I was able to talk about how the semiconductor process looks like and how the uh, semiconductor material being used in different kind of manufacturing process. Um, very basic, but. I thought, you know, it helped me because I uh, took the course in university. Well, what happened is after I entered the company, I realized my first boss who interviewed me is also the alumni of uh, Tsinghua University. Plus, his hometown is also Xinchu. So many years after, I think back and say, well, maybe it's because the Xinchu affiliation factor Help me get a job, or oh, at least equally important um, as my uh, interview performance. Okay, so my third story to share with you is very obvious. You know, do you know who is the first customizer? It's TSMC. Okay, so uh, TSMC is the first customer I served in Taiwan, but since then, all my professional career has something to do with uh, semiconductor material and the uh, electronic manufacturing process. No matter where I work, in which country, like Taiwan, China, Germany, Japan, or US, in the past 25 years. So, I always appreciate TSMC. Okay, even now, TSMC is still my customer. So let me talk a little bit about how to make this silicon um, you know, material and then use silicon material to uh, make all the high-tech semiconductor devices. You know, I, I won't go to 
too much detail, but I want to just you know highlight. Um, there's a lot of material being used in this uh, manufacturing process. First, started with how to make the um, bare silicon wafer. Okay, so you have to uh, use a raw material like sand, and then go through a different kind of chemical purification uh, process and then you can get a high purity polycrystalline silicon and then you use a high purity polysilicon crystalline uh, silicon to make this you know, silicon wafer and then starting from the silicon wafer uh, company like TSMC uh, they apply different kind of uh, technology in their factory they install probably thousands of uh, different kind of equipment okay so they use those kind of equipment to design and transfer multiple layers multiple layers of um, circuit pattern and then they fabricate the pattern by you know using a lot of different kind of materials some are using the deposition process some are using you know, cleaning etching polishing different kind of process and then eventually you can get this uh, process wafer. All the chips have been processed on top of this silicon wafer. So usually, this process goes through uh, multiple cycles. The total cycle time to make this type of uh, high-tech um, devices usually take uh, three to eight weeks. It depends. Depends on what type of uh, devices you manufacture. Some are very complex, for example, like a microprocessor using the server or PC. Uh, it may take longer time, but some of our simple uh, power discrete devices using the, uh, as a power switch in consumer electronics probably take just you know, two, three weeks to make them. So during all this process, I want to show you um, what type of material are actually being used. Okay? So there are some materials are solid. Uh, like silicon wafer, like metal targets, and some of the material actually are invisible, like gases, different kind of gases, inert gases, reactive gases, ash gas, deposition gases. Some are chemical, uh, contained in a different kind of uh, drums or uh, even as big as you know isotanker. So these are the material I have been dealing with in the last twenty-five years, and. I feel like I am unlucky, you know, I have a luxury to directly or indirectly handle all this type of material uh, in different kind of a commercial and technical role to serve my customer. So, what my experience may mean to you? Uh, I just want to summarize a couple points. Um, hopefully, you can um, use as a takeaway. Uh, after listening to my um, presentation. Uh, I would encourage you to be as open-minded as possible to find out what you really have passion for. Okay? Try to explore things with global perspective. You will be able to see beyond the horizon if you really take a global perspective. You know, look beyond what you have seen. Don't limit yourself. Never say impossible. So everything is possible. Nothing is easy. Life is full of possibilities and sometimes uh, many surprises. Try to think beyond the obvious and look behind the scene. Like what you do and then enjoy where you stay. You may not always have options to choose. Things are sometimes tough, okay? sometimes uh, beyond your control. But try to leverage what you have in your home base to achieve your long-term goal. I hope my Shinchu story can somehow inspire you. Here are a few more specific suggestions for me. First, think about what you can learn here in IBSH campus and how you can potentially apply your learning to your future career. Continue to stay connected with Shinchu, this wonderful city. And this city actually made a lot of contribution to the global high-tech industry and leverage all the available resources in Xinxiu and in IBSH to build a very strong foundation to support you to fly high, fly far, to explore the infinity and beyond. Always carry a can-do attitude. 
and your bright future starting from now, starting from here. Finally, I would like to say, it's a blessing that I have lived, I have studied, and I have worked in Xinchu. And I believe you guys, as a fresh blood of Xinchu, you have more opportunities, you have fewer constraints than my generation to explore the world. So can you see beyond the obvious? I know you can. I know you can. And I wish someday when you make a reconnection with Xinchu and you may uh, win your homecoming game and all Xinchu city people and maybe also the school will be proud of you. Thank you very much for your attention and good luck to all of you. Thank you.